Hello there, kia ora. You might have heard this week that local government minister Simeon Brown has announced that any local body authority that put in place Māori wards in the last few years when a referendum wasn't required are going to have to have a referendum at the next local body elections to see whether or not those wards stay in place or whether or not they get completely disbanded. And it's not much of a surprise from a government that makes decisions like this or this that they'd want to do something that's inherently anti-Māori. The whole idea behind Māori wards is to make sure that you've got Māori voices around the decision-making tables on councils. It's a way of working towards a partnership that's promised in Te Tiriti, and the people who vote for these are people who are on the Māori electoral roll. They don't get extra votes or anything like that, despite what some New Zealand First and Act supporters like to believe, because that's what they keep being told. In reality, people on the Māori roll have the same number of votes as people who are on the general roll. They just vote in different wards, but make sure that their representation is slightly different around that table, so that the decision-making process involves a larger number of communities, and therefore is a much more robust process. But, by the councils having to go to referendum to get results to find out if they can put one of these in, well, that's where the problems begin. Now, the referendums were actually put in place initially in 2002, when this act was first done up, and it was kind of a piecemeal offering. Some local councils went to government and actually said, we want to have this in as an option. And at the time, the local government minister turned around and said, I don't think that's the best bet to just make it a blanket decision, because you'll have people complaining about the lack of democracy. Like Heather Duplessy Allen or the New Zealand Centre for Political Research, or Hobson's Pledge, all of whom think this is an absolutely brilliant idea to force these people to go to the polls, creating infinitely more red tape and more expenses for local councils, and completely goes against the idea of localism done by locals, which the government was promoting before the election. Anyway, I thought we'd have a quick look at how this is actually a way for the government to put their foot on the scales a little bit to get the outcome they want, without really overstepping the mark and telling local government what they have to do to be incredibly racist. Because you see, they're pretty sure they know what the outcomes of these polls are going to be because there's a long history of what those outcomes have been in the past. But we get there through some really interesting specific demographical breakdowns. For example, when it comes to how many people actually go out and vote in our local body elections, it's pretty low. It's usually in the high 30s, low 40s mark. And that's kind of stabilised over the last couple of local body elections. But depending on the type of council you've got, also impacts on the turnout. For city councils, that impact tends to be, well, quite severe. They have the lowest turnout of any kind of voter base at all when you compare that with regional councils and district councils. But most of our population, both Māori and non-Māori, live within city council boundaries. So you already have a diminished voter base. On top of that, the people who are most likely to go out and vote, well... Demographically speaking, they're the ones that are most likely to jump on Facebook and complain about anything to do with Māori and Māori them. You see, what we find with voters in particular is that the factors that lead them to vote tend to be around what they consider ownership. For example, homeowners are much more likely to vote than non-homeowners in a local body election. There's also a greater proportion of older individuals who tend to go out and vote, and there tends to be a greater proportion of New Zealand Europeans who go out and vote in local body elections. And this is all from research that was done by Auckland Council, which automatically means that you've got yourself a heavily weighted outcome towards home-owning older New Zealand Europeans, who are, as many people will tell you, the ones who jump on Facebook and complain about things like the use of Te Reo Māori in news headlines or anywhere. Really? And that's a real problem. It means that we already know that the demographic most likely to go out and vote are going to be the ones that are anti-anything Māori done. And of course, these are very broad generalisations, and you're going to find people in each of these groups that don't feel that way. But this is what the government is relying on to make sure that they can get what they want. If we take a look, for example, of the breakdown of who actually owns a home in this country, well, you can see that New Zealand European Pākehās actually far outnumber everybody else. And Māori aren't even in the top two. They're the third group down on the list underneath Asian ethnicities. And that's, well, something else that's quite interesting when it comes to our voter turnout. You tend to see much higher Asian and European voter turnout than you do Māori voting turnout. And when you see such a low voter turnout in any kind of ethnic group, it means you're much less likely to see people who represent their needs and what they feel are important issues around those decision-making tables. So when the government turns around and says, we need to make sure that everything goes back to referendum because it's democratic, 
what they're actually doing is ignoring a whole bunch of processes, like dealing with submissions, or going out and talking to interested parties, or interacting with tangata whenua and local iwi, which most councils have done before they've implemented something like this. It's very much putting the foot on the scales knowing that the demographic that's going to go out and vote is going to be the demographic that tends to vote against this kind of stuff because they don't like change, because they don't like young people, because they don't think it really matters what anybody else thinks. Their opinion is more important because they feel ownership over these things. This government is doing what it can to make sure that policies like this are implemented everywhere, even in places where they weren't voted in. Local councils are obviously voted in by different voters. <sighs> but that doesn't matter, does it? Because this way they can say they've restored democracy, even though the democratic process isn't always just people going out and voting. It's about getting people involved in the process along the way.